There is universal constants that all of us should understand. They defy anomalies. They're things that we should all know. Richard Lehman writing a story outline that's going to put him on an FBI watch list. We know. It's Lehman. What did you expect? All right, The Rock understanding if he can smell what he's cooking. I'd hope so, duh. I hope his nostrils are working because it is in fact what he's cooking. R.L. Stein writing slappy books just so he can get by paying the bills without the rats and roaches taking over his apartment and potentially kicking out his dog. We expect this. These are things that we should know. So it's to no one's surprise that the creature feature subgenre is, of course, something that I'm always going to check out. All right. If there's a creature feature book out there, if there is a story that is featuring a creature, a creature is the feature, whatever. We don't need to go into the semantics. I am going to read it. That's how it works. So when I found out that there was a famous book published in the 1950s by John Wyndham, which is a creature feature dealing with killer plants, possibly leading to the apocalypse, the end of the world, on some quiet place, on some alien invasion, on that type of timing, I was like, all right, bro, I'm going to read this. And I did read it. And what do I think about it? Ugh. It was pretty good. It could have been better, but it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good story. I think it did its job. Am I a little bit disappointed that it didn't reach the full potential? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, Um, because I was kind of looking forward to the story. But nonetheless, I did have a fun time. I think it's a good read. And uh, yeah, I recommend it. I mean, it's an older book. Maybe the standards weren't as high back then, but I think it's pretty good. Um, Maybe the movie's better. I mean, uh, there's going to be a poster from the movie in my thumbnail. I want to watch that movie. See how it holds up to this, and maybe we can compare it. Is the movie better? Is the book better? We'll find out soon enough. But the book I'm talking about by John Wyndham, published back in the 1950s, is a horror sci-fi book, a creature feature, and it is called The Day of the Trifids. Now, The Day of the Trifids is a horror book, a creature feature, that's about killer plants, if you couldn't tell. Um, just before we get into the plot synopsis, you need a little bit of, I guess... Catching up to know what the triphids are. The triphids are, of course, the creature feature in this book. And they are these seven to ten foot tall giant plants. They got these conical heads, like kind of kind of look kind of like the Pokemon Bell Sprout, but from the design and the thumbnail, they're a lot creepier, but it kind of looks like Bell Sprout. This conical head inside is this stem, which kind of looks like a tongue, and there's like the sticky liquid that captures flies and other insects inside of it. You might have seen it in some plants in some pictures. But these plants are different. Not only are they humongous, 7 to 10 feet tall, but they have this 10-foot long stem projectile that shoots out like a projectile. And that's how they hunt. And they do, in fact, hunt humans as well. And the way they hunt humans is they basically are ambush predators, kind of like crocodiles or snakes. They wait out by the bushes. They wait out by foliage. And as soon as a human unsuspecting victim comes by, this stem projectile shoots out like a whip and punctures the middle of the forehead right between the eyes. And in a kill shot, it obviously punctures the brain, punctures the nerves, and you instantly die as your head is filled with poison. And from that point onward, your decomposing corpse, the plants will rip chunks out of. That's right, the plants wait by corpses to then use that 10 foot long stem projectile and then start tearing soft chunks out of your body because as you decompose, your flesh gets a lot softer and easier for them to eat and digest in that acidic sticky liquid in the conical shaped funnel head. Uh, terrifying, horrifying, horrific descriptions and stuff. And if they don't kill you, let's say if you have a non-lethal attack, you pretty much 99% of the time are going to end up blind because for some reason they have a certain level of intelligence. They understand that this is the weakest part of our bodies. If they hit us, we lose our eyesight. And for some reason, they understand that eyesight is the only thing that's making us superior to them. So if they take away our eyesight, they basically are the superior ones in that case um, in terms of senses and understanding sound and stuff. <laughs> Pretty wild, pretty pretty scientific Darwinism evolution kind of stuff right there. Uh, so pretty, pretty insane. And these plants are being 
um, harvested for their natural oils, kind of a lot like um, you see like food oil, high fructose corn syrup and stuff like that. People are trying to extract the oils and syrups out of these plants, make it into a commercial market. However, this big accident ended up happening at some point and a bunch of, uh, basically a cargo load of I guess plants basically exploded over the Soviet Union and millions of seeds spread through the wind all across the globe. So these plants are pretty much all over the globe. And what ends up happening is now you get into the plot synopsis, we can get into it. There's a main character who's in the hospital over an accident. Um, I forgot his name, so apologies. Actually, I forgot both the characters' names, but there's so many characters in this book and honestly, they matter so less that I just forgot them. I think the main girl who we see later is named Josiah, but... Or Josephina. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. But main character, he's a scientific guy. He's like a botanist, a plant biologist. I don't know what you call him, but he studies plants. Specifically, he was studying uh, the trifids um, and researching their behavior. And he ended up getting into an accident. Uh, one accidentally struck him in the middle of the forehead, and he basically has these bandages over his head. He's out in London, and at the hospital, he's afraid that he's going to be blind. However, he starts noticing that there's something eerie going on. His surroundings are a lot more quiet than he's used to. The outside, there's not as much noise, and he thinks he can hear occasional screaming and stuff. So eventually, he gets the courage to pull off his bandages and his blindfold. <laughs> As his eyes adjust, he basically finds out, luckily he's not blind, he still has his eyesight, despite being hit head-on with poison. Um, and as he gets up and starts moving around, he notices that everybody in London are blind. And he doesn't understand why, until he starts piecing pieces of evidence together, um, which he realizes that there is this uh, cosmic event that happened on Earth, where these green meteor showers were happening on a global scale. And anybody who witnessed these uh, green... Uh, comet showers ended up becoming blind. Something from the light, maybe some type of pathogen, maybe some type of radioactive stuff, but it affected uh, all of their optical nerves and all the people who saw this green meteor shower end up becoming blind. And because of that, now that they're blind, let's just say the creatures that I mentioned, these seven to ten foot tall killer plants, may or may not start seeking their advantage because they may or may not have been waiting for this and all of a sudden stuff starts turning into pandemonium people are blind people are basically permanently disabled now a lot of people start committing mass suicide you have people jumping out of windows you have stories about mothers burning their babies and children with them people are basically either killing themselves or they're completely disabled some of them are resorting to violence it's all chaos and basically kind of like this apocalyptic situation meanwhile you find out that these trifid plants start becoming ambush predators and start actually turning the tables on humans. They start hunting them, start killing the blind people, and start using them as food sources. Kind of like this, you know, change of the food chain, the change of the hierarchy within the biological chain. And, you know, as the guy is researching and finding out stuff, he starts finding out that this may or may not be tied to that meteor shower. He finds out all of London and potentially the globe has become blind, and these creatures are definitely taking advantage. So... He ends up fighting this woman, which I think they named Josephine or Josephia, I forgot. But she's sort of from a rich background, and he starts falling in love with her. And they kind of get together because they both can see. They both, for some reason, had situations which led them to not being blind. And by sheer coincidence, they find each other. He saves her from being beaten by this guy who was kind of taking advantage of her eyesight. And as they get together, they basically um, start living together and they start meeting up with other people who can see and sort of form this kind of like a revolution, a way they're forming this group um, in prospect of potentially leaving main London, finding some quiet place, and potentially, depending on what happens, whether people go into madness, whether people die, whatever happens, this is kind of like the final days of Earth and this is sort of like Noah's Flood in a certain sense as well, where people are preparing that they may have to, you know, restart society. They may have to start building it from the ground up. So a pretty chaotic, pretty wild, and pretty disturbing book. Um, and that's basically all I'm going to give away without spoiling too much. However, for the positives of this book, I do have to say the main positive is, of course, the trifids. The trifids, it's a creature feature. These plants are so terrifying. They genu like genuinely unnerve me. And I forgot to mention a big part, actually two big parts. So not only are they seven foot, 10 foot tall plants with 10 foot long projectile whip stems that puncture you in the eyes, poison your you know face, cut off your eyesight and kill you. And then they tear trunks out of you. 
but they also can walk. That's right. Th these plants have these three stumps of roots that basically allow them to crawl and kind of move forward. So these plants are able to walk. They're able to move, which is what makes them so freaky and so bizarre and such a spectacle to people that are watching. Yeah, these plants are able to walk. These are walking killer plants. Killer bell sprouts. And third, they have this communication method where they're able to patter uh, their leaves against their body and that's sort of like their way of talking to each other. And this leads to a debate that the main character and a previous scientist that he knew had him and this other biologist or scientist was working in their workplace and eventually they were looking over a field of trifids that was chained off and they heard this pattering and they start having this philosophical debate which I thought was really effectively done in the book surprisingly it was really well done this scientific philosophical debate where the other guy that he's talking to thinks that these creatures are intelligent they can talk to each other and they're talking and planning things you know he talks about how plants are superior to humans if you take away our eyesight these creatures are superior you know they're natural they rely on you know soil and sunlight and nutrients compared to us where we actually need food and order and stuff like that these things are very adapt to surviving in every climate compared to us and overall if we lose our eyesight and we can't see these things can very easily kill us and take us out so he starts basically planting those seeds, no pun intended, in within the main character's mind. And the main character kind of underestimates these plants. He thinks they can't become big threats. And eventually, as the book goes on, yeah, people were very wrong. That's not the case. These plants are terrifying, horrifying. Every scene in the book with the trifids is really good. I especially love the beginning and ending scenes. The beginning scene with the trifids where basically the main character and the woman that he's with goes back to one of their houses um, to go potentially try to save family. And a lot of horrible things are going on there involving trifids. And these things are terrifying monsters. It really puts you on the edge of your seat. And then towards the climax of the book, the ending part, um, there's a giant... Uh, scene involving the trifids that uh, basically if you've ever seen like haunting hour intruders or quiet place the idea of creatures all ganging up on you and stalking you that kind of thing along those lines and I think that is what's good about this book this book really does feel like a mixture of quiet place and the lonesome death of Jordy Varel from creep show with the plants and stuff spreading and also it kind of feels like bird box where people are blind and they lost their senses so you have a quiet place with this kind of pseudo alien invasion of these creatures that are superior to us you have bird box where we lose our eyesight and you have you know the lonesome death of Jordy Varel except this book was published way before all of those this was published back in 1951 the draft was probably done before that so this is a much older book it probably inspired a lot of those stories for how popular this one is by John Wyndham and yeah I really enjoy those parts however this book could have gotten a lot higher of a score if it wasn't for the fact that there is quite a bit of padding in the middle section there is a big portion in the middle part of this book that is basically an apocalypse survival story. It's just about people surviving the apocalypse, gathering materials, debating philosophy a lot, and it's not related to the trifids. So a lot of it feels like The Last of Us. It feels like some sort of survivor story. And that's not really what I was looking for. I was looking for a creature feature. So when I, you get all these side characters, all these philosophical debates, all this stuff about you know grabbing materials and sugar and honey and water, constantly and finding societies and stuff i'm looking for creature feature action and yet only some trifid scenes are sprinkled throughout that middle portion so what ends up happening is this book ends up feeling like an apocalypse survival ration story with trifids as the afterthought as opposed to the beginning of the book is really, really strong. The first couple chapters setting up this cosmic event, setting up the main character's dilemma, setting up the trifids. The ending of this book involving a lot of the trifids, you know, kind of becoming very dangerous on this family's life. That's a thing, you know, but the middle portion is just hunter gatherer, that kind of thing. I get why it's there, but it just feels so padded. It feels so bloated. And it really did deduct from the score of this book because this book ended up getting a 7.5 out of 10 for me, which is a pretty good, I'd still recommend you read it, but it's mostly for that middle and beginning section. The middle section is so boring in retrospect. And I feel a little bit disappointed by that. I felt like it was lost potential, but honestly, 
I still recommend you read it. The Trifids are, again, one of the most horrifying creatures. I mean, there's something cerebral, like, there's like this primal level fear that I get about these freaky plants. Plants taking over the world is in a similar light to like insects taking over the world. If you've watched Haunting Hour Swarm and Norman, that's a topic in there. The idea of insects and plants which are naturally superior to us taking us over, that is something that freaks with me really bad at times because again, it's like some real life stuff that could potentially happen. You know, knock on wood, hopefully, knock on wood, pun intended again, but knock, not, not on any killer plant wood, but normal wood, oak wood. Hopefully nothing like that happens in the human race while I'm here and maybe after that, but only while I'm here and my family's here and my loved ones and friends are here. But that stuff really is sort of terrifying to think about because it could potentially happen to any of us. Uh, hopefully never, but there's never the not possibility of it. Um, and yeah, it just freaks with me on a level. This is a great sort of, again, alien invasion, creature feature, scientific book, but it's just the fact that the middle portion feels so padded. You didn't need it. You just needed to focus on the trifids. This book should be more about the trifids and less feel like The Last of Us, as in like building relationships, debating philosophy. There are so many pages of them debating this crazy ass philosophy that you're just sitting there like, can you stop with the poetic high cues and shit? Can you just get to the main point and talk like humans? But no, 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 they can't. They can't. You know, I thought British people would be more so talking about, you know, English breakfast, beans, the, the queen, crumpets. I don't know. I don't know. History that doesn't matter. Thousand-year-old plates that no one cares about. But no, instead they're debating philosophy at the end of the world. Is what it is. But yeah, pretty good book. I'd recommend you read it. Is it the best one? No, it's a little bit overhyped. Yeah, but I can see why it inspired so many similar stories. And I have to commend John Wyndham for that. That's all I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll have other content coming, but this was just a sneak preview of that. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy. I have other adult horror content down below. Check out my channel. I have other videos and playlists. And let me know what you guys want to see. Have you read this book? Let me know if you disagree or agree with me. If you've not read it, I'd suggest you check it out. And yeah, that's all I have for today. Deuces. And of course, the only plants we care about is the banyan. In which case, 7 to 10 foot tall banyan... That sounds like that scene from Scary Movie 2 where the guy got rolled, Shorty got rolled up as a joint and smoked, which I wouldn't mind that experience.